Um, so hello and welcome to the fifth Meet Your Farmer webinar. Today we're focused on the Wood River Farmers Market. I'm Amy Mateus. I'm the program director for the Sun Valley Institute for Resilience. Local Food Alliance, a program of the Sun Valley Institute for Resilience, has been uplifting our local food shed since 2014. And last year we launched the Locally Grown Guide. This webinar series features farmers, ranchers, food artisans, and small business owners who are key parts of our community food shed. Today, we're joined by my colleague, Mike Gordon, who will be helping out with all the tech stuff. So if you have any issues, you're welcome to directly chat him. Like I said, we are recording this webinar, so please do stay muted during the presentation. We will have a Q&A session towards the end where you're welcome to turn on your cameras and unmute to ask questions. If you have questions throughout the presentation, you're welcome to drop them in the chat box, which is usually located on the lower right-hand side of your screen. Make sure I can flip that. All right, I think that's working. Uh, today, our webinar will include details about the Haley and Ketchum farmers markets, the benefits of shopping at a local farmers market. We'll introduce you to three of our farmers market vendors, talk about the products they offer, and share with you a full list of participating vendors at both markets. Finally, we'll have a good amount of time at the end for questions and answers with our panelists. Um, I also want to take a moment and just thank our panelists for participating today. Not only is this like the height of the growing season, but it's also the busiest week for, during 4th of July for both of our farmers markets. So thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Before I share the details about each separate market location, I wanted to share a little bit of information about the Wood River Farmers Market in general. So um, all vendors must live within a hundred mile radius of the market as the crow flies and the market really strives to maintain a mix of 75% food products and 25% craft products. So that really ensures that ample local food is available at our farmers markets. Vendors are also prohibited from reselling products, meaning that the local food that you see there at the booths are grown by those farmers market vendors themselves. The Wood River Farmers Market Association vendors also accept SNAP EBT benefits and they participate in the Double Up Food Bucks program, which turns $10 of SNAP benefits into $20 to shop for delicious, nutritious food items. You can, um, if you have SNAP or EBT benefits, you get your coins at the farmers market booth, which has signs up there like you'll see down here on the bottom of the screen. Um, you could also learn more at the, uh, woodriverfarmersmarket.org to sign up for their newsletter or follow them on social media for information about what's happening each week. Slide, there we go, slide forward. Uh, the Ketchum Farmers Market has been in operation since 2005. Each Tuesday from June to October, the Ketchum Market offers delicious locally grown food, fresh cut flowers, delicious baked goods and crafts from artists throughout the region. Uh, launched during COVID, the Ketchum Market also offers an online ordering platform. Shoppers can order or pick up starting each Friday at 8 a.m. The pickup does happen at the farmer's market between 5, 15 and six in a drive through style setup. And shoppers who opt to walk and shop can join from two to 5, 15. So the market itself is located down at the River Run um, parking area where there's handicap spots and also the bus turnaround right before the river down there at the base of the mountain. So it's a beautiful lo location. The Haley's Farmers Market has a brand new day, time, and location for the 2021 season. Um, many of us have been hoping for a weekend market for many years, and the Farmers Market Association made that wish come true this summer. Every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Haley Market is located on the grassy and shady, which is great in this heat strip of Rupert and McCurcher Park next to Highway 75. They offer local live music, lovely spots to sit and have a bite to eat and sip on a lemonade or drink, and lots of great produce vendors and craft vendors as well. Each of the vendors on the call today have been to the Saturday markets this season, and we hope to see it flourish in the weeks and years to come. So quickly, I just wanted to cover some of the benefits of shopping at a local farmer's market. So farmers market provide benefits to the producers, shoppers, and the broader community. For producers, farmers market offers retail locations that allows them to interact with their customer base. It serves as an easy point of entry for small businesses with minimal barriers to participate. Like you don't have a costly rent and the market does provide some support in getting your name out there to the community. 
Many consider farmers markets as a service, as a business incubator, introducing new businesses to the marketplace and also providing a built-in customer basis with our local community. The seasonal focus of farmers markets provides a shopping experience during the height of the growing season. For consumers, farmers markets let you shop with multiple vendors all in one easy trip. They provide a community gathering space to meet up with friends and family and enjoy the flavors of the region. Farmers markets can also introduce shoppers to new businesses and new products and give each shopper an opportunity to build a relationship with their food producers. Now, without further ado, let's meet a few of our food producing vendors. I'd like to pass the mic over to them to introduce themselves, their businesses, their offerings, and why they choose to participate at the Wood River Farmers Market. We will go in alphabetical order based on name. So let's start with John from Agrarian Harvest. John, if you want to unmute, there you go. I got you. Uh, John Klein from Agrarian Harvest. Uh, We're located in Buell, Idaho. Um, You know, our our favorite part of the farmer's market is just being able to, to meet the customers and interact. It's a great time to get off the farm and be around people instead of plants and animals. Um, Our farm is a highly diversified um, produce and protein farm. We raise beef, pork, chicken, ducks, as well as 48 varieties of produce from lettuce to tomatoes, zucchini, cucumbers, potatoes, green beans, and a whole bunch more. Um, it's, <clears throat> we found, especially through COVID, that you know, our customers actually know who we are and we were, you know, we were able to, to work with them through that. So, being at the farmer's market and, and having our customers know who we are isn't always apparent until something like that happens. So we really appreciate our customers. And I think that our customers benefit because they knew where their food was coming from. Um, not only during a crisis situation like that, but um, just in general, knowing where your food comes from. Uh, We've been part of the organic program, uh, animal welfare approved. And we believe in organic principles. Um, There's some issues with the organic program right now that uh, a lot of the smaller producers are, are taking issue with and that corporate farms are doing things like hydroponic um, uh, I call it substitute organic. So they're, they're converting their farms to organic and just substituting their, their restricted pesticides for organically approved ones, which are still broad spectrum pesticides. And, you know, we don't agree with that. We don't, there's no soil in the hydroponic program and the base of organic is healthy soil, healthy food, healthy people. So, um, that has really made it important for consumers to know really where their food is coming from. And, and farmers markets uh, make that connection for us. Um, we've been at the Woodrow Farmers Market for uh, nine years. I believe the first four were in Haley only, and then we moved in to catch them. And we did take a couple of years off of Haley, but we're back uh, this year from, from the first. Uh, the location is uh, really, really nice. There's shade for the vendors, there's shade for the customers. It's got a really, it's on grass, so it's cool. Uh, you know, if you're taking your dog to the market, they're not walking on asphalt. Um, it's just been a really good experience this year. And that's probably about all I have unless, uh, until we get to question and answers. Um, 
Thanks, John. I appreciate you sharing some of the background about the organic certification and that, and we love having you at the Haley Market. It's great to have you back down as a vendor. So thanks for showing up there. Uh, next, we'll pass it, uh, next, we'll pass it over to Emily with Itty Bitty Farms. You know what? Can Katie go first? <laughs> sure, if okay. Katie can. Um, Katie, are you available to jump in and speak first? Katie is um, not only Wood River Ranch Beef, she also uh, offers Katie's Cakes, delicious and pretty cupcakes, and she's our Farmers Market Association Board President. So Katie, if you are here, we'd love to have you jump in and speak before Emily. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so I kind of feel like I play three roles at the Farmers Market. Um, I guess my first and foremost role in all of it was um, selling our grass-fed, grass-finished beef. So I am um, with Wood River Ranch Beef. Um, our ranch is just south of Bellevue, right off of Highway 75. And um, people really like that we are like, truly local. Um, and so they, they appreciate being able to go to the market and buy local products. Um, so yeah, we've been doing, with our beef, we've been doing the market, um, I guess for nine years now. Um, and then, so and then with my cupcake business, I started that in 2000, I think I started going to the markets with it in 2016. And it was just kind of like a side thing that um, I started making cupcakes for my friends and family. And um, there was kind of a, a need for it, I guess, in the market. So I was like, why not? Why not add another thing to my plate, even though I didn't really need it. Um, and then I am, I've been serving on the Wood River Farmers Market Board since 2015. I'm on my fourth year of being the, the president of the, the board of directors. Um, so I, I definitely stay busy with that. And I've really been we've been doing both markets since the start with our beef. And so one of my biggest pushes as a board member has been to keep the Haley market going. It's definitely been challenging for a lot of years. We've had a lot of um, obstacles and hurdles that we've had to, to overcome with the Haley market as far as trying out different locations and different days and times. And so we've kind of been through it all with Haley and there was definitely some points that um, the majority of the board was kind of like, is it really worth continuing to do because we're losing vendors and customers and numbers were down and it was kind of really sad from a vendor standpoint. Um, so yeah, we just, we stuck through it. And this year it was, you know, let's, let's try Saturday. And of course people were reluctant. Um, Obviously people don't always like change, but sometimes it's essential when you're trying to make something work. And I just flat out told the board, I said, I don't think it's gonna hurt us. So let's try it. And if it's an absolute disaster, you guys can come back at me. But luckily the first three weeks have been amazing for Haley. And then of course, catch them, you know, we're going strong and catch them. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to talk more about my businesses, but it's kind of hard because like I said, I, I kind of serve three roles at the farmer's market, but it's just been great from a, from a vendor standpoint. It's um, like Amy said, when she was introducing the markets, it's a, it's a great place to, when you're starting out a business or when you're coming into, to the Valley, um, you know, obviously if you were wanting to get like a brick and mortar, it would be really expensive investment. So with the farmer's market, you kind of get your foot in the door. And we've had a lot of businesses that have started at the market and then grown from there. So it's just, it's been great to see everybody um, grow through the markets and, and meet customers and make names for themselves. Thank you, Katie, and thanks for giving us a little background about Haley. I think we're all excited to see the shift to Saturday and really want to make sure that it continues. So we'll show up and support for sure. Um, and I think 
I hope maybe Emily's ready now because I see her back on video. So I'll pass it to Emily if she's available. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. I no worries. needed a, just a, just a moment. So I appreciate it, Katie. Um, so my name is Emily Knowles. Um, myself, my husband and our children um, kind of run um, Itty Bitty Farms. We farm out in Cary. Um, we have lots of different um, business avenues that we do. We have our um, our retail location out in Cary that's attached to our farm where we sell our products and some other um, people's products. But mostly we have been working on getting the farm expanded this year. We're trying a lot of different um, crops and um, trying to ex like just expand the volume of the things that we have grown in the past. Uh, we, we participate in the Ketchum and Haley Farmers Markets. And we also host a farmer's market in Cary on Friday nights, um, right on our farm. Um, we've been farming for just, uh, I think this is our third, third year with the Wood River Farmers Markets, but we have been farming a few years before that. But we, this is, um, let's see, March 2020 is when we um, kind of broke ground at our new location in Cary, where our farm and store are right now. It's been super fun these last couple of years figuring out how to farm. I'm sure everybody kind of has had different challenges with respect to COVID, but it's been a wild ride. Um, and then something new and fun, we are moving into more of a multi-generational farm because we uh, were able to convince my parents to come out and be farm partners with us. They sold their farm in Texas and, and now we have their added help. So we're looking for towards great things in the future for Itty Bitty Farms this year. We're really looking forward to it, excited about all that. Great, thanks for that introduction, Emily. And I think we're all happy that you're there in Cary serving a big, um, part of our food shed where we needed some fresh produce and groceries available in that part of the South Valley. So thank you for your commitment to our uh, local food community. So I am going to share my screen again and get into some details about our vendors. So um, all of our vendors gave a great overview of their business. So I won't spend too much time on these slides, but just to reiterate that uh, Agrarian Harvest is at the Ketchum Market Weekly and Select Haley Markets. Their products are also available through Craze Market and Garden, Nourish Me, and at Adkinson's Markets. You can also order online from their website, agrarianharvest.com. And they have so many different products. Um, you can see all sorts of things at their booth throughout the season. They have pasture-raised meats, including pork and chicken and beef and farm fresh eggs. In the spring and early summer, they have plant starts available. Um, throughout the vegetable growing season, you'll see colorful tomatoes, squashes, peppers and eggplants, fresh garden peas and beans, herbs and leafy greens, garlic and spring onions, and lots of colorful potato varieties. Later in the season, you can stock up, stock up on winter staples like pumpkins, winter squash, dried beans, and even more potatoes. Um, I'll give John an opportunity to share if there's anything I missed or a certain product you want to highlight. So John, if you want to jump on and say anything else. Uh, like you said, it's a pretty diverse and I sometimes forget all the stuff that, that we raise until it's you know ready for market. Um, the list here is pretty good. Some of our stuff is uh, real seasonal short supply, um, but you know we do our best. So if you have questions, um, feel free to contact us at agrarianharvest.com. Our emails and phone numbers are on there. So that's it. Great, thanks. And we do have a contact slide towards the end, which has everybody's um websites, email, social media handles, et cetera. So there'll be a chance to give more contact info after we get through some of these vendor details. So Itty Bitty Farms, um, like Emily shared, they have a retail location in Cary on Main Street. They're also at both the Ketchum and Haley Farmers Markets, as well as the Cary Farmers Markets that they host on Fridays. 
Um, they specialize in fresh cut microgreens, leafy greens, herbs, and lots of delicious value added products. Go to the next slide. Um, some of the other things that you can find at their farmer's market booths are plant starts, fresh salsa, pickled eggs, herbs and spice mixes, uh, flavored butters, all sorts of delicious things. And then one thing I really love that Itty Bitty has are their t-shirts with some of the best food puns on them. So if you happen to be in the market for a bright green t-shirt, you can look there at some of their booths where they have them available. They're pretty adorable, or you can see them and their kids wearing them at the markets. Uh, Emily, if you're available, is there anything else you want to add? Nope, that was awesome. Nothing. Okay, great. Thank you. And then we'll jump over to Wood River Ranch Beef. Um, so as Katie shared with us, they are at both the Haley and Ketchum Farmers Markets. Their operation is in the Bellevue Triangle. You can see their sign as you're driving uh, on 75. Um, they are grass-fed and finished, use no hormones or antibiotics on their direct-to-market herd. They also, as Katie mentioned, have Katie's Cakes, which are really pretty and delicious cupcakes. And um, you can also find their products at Craze Market and Garden, Nourish Me, Cafe Della. You can order online from their website. You can also try a delicious grass-fed burger using their beef up at Smiley Creek Lodge. So they have a lot of different cuts available, like ground meat, stew meat, various roast steaks and slow cooking favorites. They also sell beef bones for making bone broth and bone marrow. Um, they have some offal like liver, they sell tallow. They also sell by the individual cut. And sometimes they have bulk options available too. Um, Katie, maybe I wanted to ask you specifically like, since there's some, been some shortages of your beef because of how popular your products have been and like issues with related to COVID with processing, what do you have plenty of this season and like what are you running low on? And if you're out of something, when might you see it available again? Yeah, so uh, like you just mentioned, obviously as a, a food producer, a lot of us are facing um, still kind of some remnants of the big hit that we had during COVID of last year. Um, so as a, as a meat producer, and I know that John can relate to this, um, you're not like you're planning years in advance of what product you're hoping to sell. Like for us, it's two years in the making. So we keep our steer calves back and then we raise them up to about 24 to 30 months of age. And that's when they go in to be slaughtered for meat. Um, so last spring I was selling meat and even into last summer at a, you know, an, an unprecedented rate that I wasn't expecting. Um, so I, I'm always reluctant and um, I feel bad telling customers like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of this cut and I'm out of this cut and I'll have more and you know, a, a month or so. Um, so I just ask customers to be patient and bear with me. Luckily, as it sits right now, um, a lot of my cuts that I was out of a lot last summer, I have them back in stock. Um, but, you know, as the summer goes on and as the markets get busier, there's definitely things that I'm going to be running out of, unfortunately. Um, but I always... <laughs> tell customers, you know, you're welcome to pre-order things, which kind of leads into the bulk orders that Amy was talking about. Um, so we do, or we do offer a uh, quarter, half and whole beef. And now I've kind of gone back to primarily offering those in the fall. Um, I do currently have a list of people that are interested in placing those orders. So if that's something that uh, your family is interested in doing, I would highly recommend either calling me or sending me an email to get on that list. Um, that's something that I just kind of have to wait until September to see how my herd is looking and my availability at the butcher. That's another thing that has played in since COVID is not being able to get into the butcher. Um, so yeah, if, if it's something you're interested in, please reach out now. And again, those orders uh, I'll start filling those when the markets end at the end of September. Thank you for sharing those updates. And I know it's been a trying time with 
of increased of sales, which is awesome, but um, troubles with getting into processing. So I really hope that that eases up and we're all able to rely on your delicious beef and John's amazing meat products too for the rest of the season and all winter too. Um, so now I will go into the other vendors. So just in case you haven't gotten everything on your list from the participating vendors on this webinar today, I wanted to share with you other people you might see at the upcoming market. Um, this list will be sent out to you via email. So like, do not worry if you don't catch each and every one of them. But I just wanted to highlight like a couple things that I'm really excited about seeing. So every Saturday in Haley, I pick up a loaf of rice bread and they make that with hillside green flour. And he has his own really cool, I think handmade um, bread baking oven that he pulls behind on a trailer. So it's really fun to see. And he's baking and pulling fresh loaves out of that at the market. At both Ketchum and Haley, you can pick up a lemonade at Road Bars and a taco from La Perilla, which are great, delicious options for snacking and sipping while you're there. And I've really been loving all the fresh cut flower offerings so far this season. They really make a nice gift for a loved one, a host and host or a hostess gift, or to just brighten up your own kitchen table. Um, in Ketchum, there this list is like gets longer and longer every year. I don't really know how they fit more producers in or vendors in, but um, new this year, I've seen an Atomic Potato Chip Company, so I'm making potato chips down in Arco, which is really cool. And both in Ketchum and Haley, we've seen a local trout farm offer up freshly filleted fish at their markets. So that's a really fun new offering. Um, when you're in Ketchum, you cannot forget about the pies. Both Brick Oven Bakery and Idaho bring scrumptious pies to the market, and I recommend getting there early as they tend to sell out, and Brick Oven Bakery always has a long line, so definitely show up uh, at that 2 p.m. market opening to make sure you can grab one of their famous pies. While I didn't mention each and every vendor, um, the best way to learn about your farmer's market vendors is to show up and go shopping. I really hope I see you there. And uh, now that we've learned all about our Wood River farmer's markets, we're almost ready to jump into the Q&A session, but I just, um, I wanted to share the contact info and also invite our participants to place their contact info, whether it's your website, your social media handle, your email in the chat box so people can easily get that if they want to. Um, and then before we jump into Q&A, I just want to invite people to also take a survey. Let us know how we did today. Let us know if you learned something new or were introduced to a new vendor. You can um, take a, a photo of this and that'll pop up the link and I'll also drop the link in the chat box for you in a moment. And with that, we will, I'll stop sharing my screen and we'll jump into Q&A. If we don't have anyone ready to ask questions, um, you can put them in the chat. You can come off mute and ask them if you'd like directly. And if you don't have any questions right now, I will get us started because I thought of a handful of questions for our panelists. So I'll give people just like a minute or two to think about their questions. And I'm dropping that link in the, for the survey in the chat right now. And if our panelists wanna put their contact info or websites or social media handles, you're welcome to do that in the chat as well. And I, I don't see any questions in the chat. So maybe I will just start asking a question for you all. And I'll kind of call on each of you to answer and we'll go around um, and switch it up a little bit. So in your own words, why are farmers markets beneficial to the community? Anyone want to take that first? Let's see. Katie already answered it a little bit. So maybe we'll go to John first because he came off. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I kind of covered it a little bit in that knowing you farmer, knowing where your food comes from, um, you're getting it you're getting it as fresh as you possibly can, uh, especially with uh, itty bitty farms. I mean, they're cutting it right in front of you. You know, we harvest it generally the day before, especially with uh, the Saturday market, because we have to leave at six to get there on time. Uh, it It's fresh, fresh cut vegetables last a lot longer. There's less food waste involved with it. And you know where your food's coming from. And you can ask, you can ask your farmer, if you have food safety questions or if you have 
any concerns, how to store the vegetables, how to prepare the vegetables, new ideas. Uh, I think that's a great benefit of the farmer's market. Thanks for sharing that, John. Emily, I see you on video with the newest addition to Itty Bitty Farm. Do you wanna jump on and share why you think farmer's markets are beneficial to the community? Yeah, I think everyone has kind of touched on this, but I definitely agree with um, just being able to see, but even from a farmer's perspective, like the thing that we say all the time, it's great for us to see our customers. We love interacting with the people who are supporting us and helping us along our, you know, helping us make our dreams come true. Uh, we just love it. Um, the other thing that we really feel strongly about when it comes to how farmers markets benefit a community is it, I think the more opportunities that we give a community to just come out for anything, for something, people, it's a space where people can interact with other people. And that is just huge. Um, you know, even wider than uh, a food systems benefit, it is a community benefit in that if people have an opportunity to, to go out the outside where other people are, I mean, that just can make the difference in a community. It's been awesome in Cary when we started our market there. Just, you know, if you don't have anything going on on a Friday night, like you can just come out and just hang out and sit around and talk to others and really get to know the other people in your community you may not get to see very often or, or interact with people that you, you haven't met before. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, Emily. I know for me, like the farmer's market is my biggest social outing of the week. And it's twice a week, sometimes three times a week if I make it down to a Friday night market. And it's, it is so fun to see people out and about um, outside shopping, appreciating local food, but even just sitting and chatting, even if you're not shopping, just like go and walk around and meet people. And it's, it's a really great time. So Katie, anything else you want to add into that of why farmers markets are beneficial? Um, yeah, I did want to add something. So before I moved up to Idaho, I taught um, middle school agriculture and it was, I mean, it was an ag area, but it was also a city that's population was like over 120,000 people. Um, so just from that standpoint, uh, you know, I, I was teaching seventh and eighth graders about everything basically kind of related to agriculture. And um, it's really sad to see kids and even up into adults, you know, that don't understand where their food's coming from and they don't get the appreciation for that. They just think that they go to the grocery store and that's where it comes from. Um, so I really like when I see families coming and shopping at the farmer's markets with young kids because they're starting that education process at a young age. And I just, I think that's really important. And as our society has grown away from, um, you know, we have like less than 2% of our world population involved in ag. Um, so it's just the farmer's market is a really great place to expose kids and adults to, to that process. Thanks for bringing in that educational piece. I think that's so spot on and people need to know where their food comes from, who grows their food, like pizza doesn't come off a tree and the brown cow doesn't make chocolate milk, right? And I think um, farmer's markets are a firsthand experience in learning more about that. So I really, I really, uh, I hear that. Um, uh, you all kind of hinted at it a little bit in some of your introductions, but I'm wondering like, how did the COVID pandemic affect your business at the farmer's market? I know in Ketchum, it was a little tough, like wearing masks and not having, you know, every, like only a certain amount of people in at one time. So did you feel any stresses from that in your business or did it help your business? Because everyone wanted to shop local. So um, Katie, we'll start with you this time around. Yeah, so I kind of touched on it. Um, it it actually made our business boom because people were really worried about not being able to find, um, you know, meat in, in their grocery stores. And so I had a, a lot of customers, actually a lot that I had established from previous years, farmers markets reach out to me and place 
um, orders when everything was kind of starting last spring. Um, and then from a, yeah, from a standpoint of being on the board of directors and being the president, I had a lot of um, local producers that reached out kind of early on and they were concerned that we weren't gonna be able to hold the farmer's market and they weren't gonna have a place to sell and should I plant? And you know, there was a lot of what ifs, obviously, just like everyone's day-to-day -day life last year. Um, so I was just really happy with the fact that we were able to have a successful farmer's market um, last year for both customers and our vendors. So that was just huge from the standpoint. There was a lot of farmer's markets that had to totally change the way that they did things. And we were, it was nice that we were able to incorporate the online ordering last year in Ketchum. I know that um, customers greatly appreciated it because it was just kind of like a, a no contact of sorts way to still be able to get things from the farmer's market. Um, and then vendors really appreciated it because it kind of gave them an idea going into the market of um, they had some sales kind of secured so they knew it wasn't going to be a, a, a bad day or whatever. Um, but yeah, we were just, even though the total sales were slightly down last year, we still were able to do like 85% of what we had done the year before. So it, it ended up being a good year for the market. I'm glad to hear it was relatively comparable um, despite everything. And I was so grateful that you all continued on because I know that could have, you could have just called it and not done it. So I appreciate your willingness to um, adjust as necessary and make it happen and also offer people that opportunity to shop online. Although I'm, I loved still going in person because it's not the same to just not connect with all of our amazing farmers and producers. Um, Emily, you jumped on video again, so I'll give you a chance. And like you said, you opened your retail store in March, 2020, like right at the beginning of the pandemic. So how did it affect your business, both in Cary and also at the farmer's market in Wood River Valley? Um, I think it was actually like perfect timing <laughs> for our store in Cary because, um, we, I mean, nobody saw this coming. I mean, well, we did a little but we, we had planned on opening in March and then Ooh. we just got it open right before lockdown started in March. Um, and people were able to buy regular groceries cause we did carry regular, um, style groceries, um, in our retail, um, store in carry. So that was good. And I, I felt like it really helped the community as far as the farmer's markets. Um, we did COVID was just a medium challenge. Probably. Um, the, the problem with some of our products is that we do sometimes have to do a bit of a sales pitch because people it's n some of the stuff is not some things that people usually, Oh, I know. I want carrots, you know, what I mean? people know what they want with some of the other vegetables, but sometimes we have to kind of convince people to try microgreens. I feel like we're getting to the point where everybody likes them now, but yeah, during COVID it was, it was good, but we sure appreciated the pre-sales. And I feel like um, COVID kind of had this effect on almost in a, a lot of aspects of the way that we do things now. We just had to adjust and um, update the the way that we function as farms, as, as markets, as businesses in general, because um, we're, you know, COVID's over, but having the pre-orders still available for people, a lot of people really love it. And it helps with us because there's a lot of products that we don't bring to market unless, unless they're pre-ordered. We, we only have them available for people to pre-order because um, it's just too specific of a thing that we're not going to make like 50 of them and then bring them all, you know, so it, it works really well for us. And I think having to adjust because of COVID has in the long run is, is a great way for us to move forward as a market. So we're down. <laughs> great. Thanks for that insight. And interesting that you only offer some stuff on pre-sale. I did not know that. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I should be pre-ordering. So I get access to those uh, lucrative things that aren't at the booth. Uh, John, what about you? How did COVID affect your business at the farmer's market or just in general? 
in general and including farmers market, um, you know, our sales were were down primarily because we had issues with getting processing done. And uh, as far as produce sales, dry beans, everything else was we had a super good year on. But but processing, sourcing some seed um, was was a challenge. But all in all, you know, we, we got through it. I think uh, we got built a lot more customer loyalty by having by having product available that they were not able to find in other places. We had we had grocery stores contacting us to get product that had never contacted us before. So, you know, it was it was there were it was tough. There was some stresses involved, but but overall, um, you know, it, it wasn't bad for the farmers. Yeah, I think for some people, it's a little counterintuitive to hear like that farmers, local farmers saw more sales, increased sales, increased demand. And I think that speaks to the resilience of a regionalized food system is that our farmers are selling into our local community. They have connections. They're not just going to sell out to the biggest buyer, whoever wants it, because they they want to support our customers. They want to support our community. So I'm glad you all shared that. And hi, Autumn. We see you there. Hi. Um, so my next question is more flavorful and fun. I'm interested in knowing what's your locally, what's your favorite locally sourced meal? It can be your own products, products you get from other vendors, other things that you make grow, but you don't sell and just love it's lunchtime. So it's always fun to hear, uh, what could you be eating right now if you had the option? So we'll start with Katie. Yeah, so that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of a tricky question for me. Um, I do want to say that you at customers probably think that we are able to um, shop the farmer's markets a lot since we're there, <laughs> but unfortunately, like it'll get to be almost six o'clock and I've been so busy at my booth that I'm, I haven't been able to go around and, and buy a bunch of stuff, um, but I will say that I try to uh, go and grab at least some produce. I like to get like lettuces and stuff from um, Prairie Sun and Shooting Star. And I like to try to eat a lot of salads in the summer, mostly because they're quick and I don't have a lot of time to cook. Um, but yeah, and then I, I really like that we're pulling in some new vendors that offer some unique things. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to kind of try some different things too, from people that, that are new this year. So. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, I guess you were like vendors, they need to find a uh, shopping person who will do the rounds for them while they stay at their booths. Cause yeah, if you're really busy, you don't get the chance to go around or when you do everything's already sold out. Cause it's when the market slows down because our markets are popular. Um, John, what about you? What's your favorite? locally sourced meal to eat? Oh, meal planning. That's a challenge for me. <laughs> I, you know, certain dishes. I really like, you know, shishito peppers, uh, sauteed with salt and garlic. That's, that's pretty great. Um, I don't, I don't get to try a lot of other vendors products either because we're just so busy all the time. My kids do. My kids, my kids go and get uh, ice cream over at King's Crown and drinks at Road Bars and and so we don't get a chance for that. But our our easy go to meals in the summertime for us are link sausages because they're they're quick to thaw out and quick to grill when you forgot that oh it's seven o'clock and nobody's even planned anything for for a meal because we've been working all day and busy. Um, but yeah, I, I think shishito peppers is probably one of my favorites for the summer. And John, humor us. When will shishito peppers show up at your market booth this season? Uh, I'm hoping end of July. Okay. So they're out there. They're blooming. So. All right. Looking forward to that. It's one of my favorites, too. I, I love all produce that's in season. I'm one of those people that whatever is fresh in season, that's my favorite at the moment. Emily, what about you? What's your favorite locally sourced meal? 
Okay, I'm gonna be super real with you guys. <laughs> the other day, we were like working late at the greenhouse. It was like so late, but um, we had our um, Instapot there. So we had a bunch of stuff left over from the <laughs> market. Um, and we, we had our um, salad turnips, which we sell just to eat fresh. And that we usually eat them fresh, but they had gotten a little dried out. So I'm like, we're just gonna throw these in the Instapot with some potatoes. And like, we just made the most basic meal. Like it was so basic. We even just threw some, some beef in there and had potatoes and turnips. And I felt a little bit like an old timey farmer eating potatoes and turnips. <laughs> but it was so good <laughs> okay there's my real life story for y'all like just eat some potatoes and turnips <laughs> thank you for that simple food when it's local and fresh is delicious even if it's not some elaborate fancy dish it can just be some turnips and potatoes in an instant pot um, especially when it's so hot out like I'm all about the salads and instant pots and broths right now because like I'm not turning my oven on no thank you it's way too hot for that so it's nice to get those good tips. Um, and I, I, we still don't have any questions in the chat, but just a reminder, anyone on the call, you're welcome to drop some questions. I can keep asking them because I've got so many because I really appreciate hearing from all of our farmers and our board president, of course. It's great to have her insight here as well. Um, I'm wondering, like, Obviously, shopping at a farmer's market is a great way to support you all. But aside from that, what are other ways that you think the audience could support you all? Um, and whether it's supporting the overall farmer's market or you as just farmer or food producers in general. Emily, let's start with you this time. Okay. Um, obviously, like you said, we're, we're at the farmer's markets. We've got our store in Cary. Um, just, just come out and and do do as much local shopping as you can um another thing and i kind of touched on this with the covid question but um you know we've we've decided that we are going to start doing online ordering for our personal store that people can come and do pickups um even just people in carry if they want to order ahead and make sure that they can get their specific um products or value-added products that they want on a specific day, they can pre-order those things. And um, just another way to kind of reach as many people and kind of offer our stuff to as many people as possible. Because a lot of times people come into the store and um, you know it's just barely sold out of, oh, we just sold our last salsa. We don't have any more of that left or this or that. So um, we're working on getting our website updated so people can can do online ordering through us as well but we are always on craze every week craze market garden website and that's another great way to just to get our products and other than that come visit us at the farm we're always there <laughs> always and it's beautiful to go down there um, it's a really great store and they've got some fun crafty things and baked goods too as well as their fresh produce and value added products so exciting to hear that you're going to be launching an online ordering option that's great um, we'll make sure we update that on your like vendor list on our online locally grown guide so it's up to date with that info john i'll pass it to you aside from shopping at your farmer's market or including that what are other ways that the audience can support you as a farmer uh, in order to support us at the market, obviously shopping with us is great, but also, um, you know, being supportive of us in the community. Uh, if, you know, if you hear somebody complaining about, oh, you know, the farmer's market is always set up down there and it causes traffic, you know, you tell that person, hey, I like the farmer's market. I like to, to, to visit with my farmers and, and I think they should be there and I think it should be out there and, and and so that we can find it and we know it exists um you know step, stepping the farmers back in the corner is not a very good way to support your farmer so we also sell um we have an online store uh the online through water farmers market as well and just uh you know thank your farmer 
Thanks for that, John. I really like that reminder of like, if you hear someone complaining about the market, remind them of why, how much you love the market and that it's a big asset to our community. So a little parking, a little traffic, get over it and support our farmers shop anyways. Um, Katie, what about you? Anything that you want to add into the, how can people support you as a farmer, rancher, food artisan, and as the board president? Yeah, so we sell our beef year round. Um, so when the farmer's market ends, uh, you can still continue to buy our beef through a, a few different options that you touched on earlier. Um, I think for me too, a huge thing is, um, you know, we've, we've tried to set the farmer's markets where there are convenient times and locations for people. Um, but there's still a lot of people that aren't gonna be able to come to a farmer's market. So what's really been beneficial for us is just word of mouth. Um, so people will buy our beef and uh, have it at like a, you know, cookout on the weekend and they'll invite people over and, and then I'll have those people show up or call me and say they had really good short ribs or whatever and how can I get some. Um, so that's been huge at expanding our customer base is just telling your friends, you know, I got this awesome product and you should check them out. Um, and then, yeah, just to kind of expand on what John said, I think just uh, promoting a, a positive image for local food and our farmers markets in the community is, is really beneficial to all of us. I know that I was talking earlier about struggles that we've had with keeping the Haley market going, but Ketchum's also gone through its fair share of, of things in the last five years, you know, with changing our location down to River Run, which honestly has been amazing from a vendor standpoint, because it's a lot less stressful and there's a lot more room to spread out down there. But um, I still hear people saying like, I really wish you were still in town. And um, so I think just help if customers could help kind of educate the public too about why things have been done the way that they've been done and, and just always yeah, putting a, a positive note in for us is, is huge in, in helping us. Yeah, I mean, as much as I love farmers markets, being in the center of town, as someone who lives in the South Valley, it's so much easier to go to River Run because I don't have to drive all the way through Ketchum. I can just like pull into River Run and go right back to Haley afterwards. So I hear that I'm sure with vendors and trailers and hauling and stuff too, it makes it a little bit easier at the River Run location. Um, so we are pretty much at time right now, and I want to respect everyone and let you all off here um, right at about one o'clock, but I just want to open it up now and like, is there, you all shared so much great information and your own personal stories and thoughts, but if there's anything else you want to add, feel free to come off mute and just jump in and say whatever it is that's on your mind that you want to share with the audience and no pressure if you shared it all already, but I always want to leave the door open for any last words of wisdom, stories, thoughts, calls to action, et cetera. No one, nothing more to add. I can say something real quick. Um, I just, I greatly appreciate uh, this opportunity to talk today. And I have really enjoyed this webinar series that um, you've been helping put on Amy with the, the Local Food Alliance and Sun Valley Institute. Um, when I, I know when I first started the farmer's markets, I was kind of new to the Valley and then getting onto the board, like I didn't have a whole lot of training per se, um, but just the support of the local community and then the local food community has been huge in, in helping us move forward. So um, again, just thank you for all of your support and it's always nice to to work together um, when you're trying to move towards a common goal of just educating people about local food and all of the, the wonderful um, local producers that we have. So thank yeah. you again. Thank you, Katie. We're so lucky to have you as part of our food community and all the roles that you play, all three of them, plus many more, I'm sure that you do that you didn't even bring up today. So thanks for that. I'll, I'll say something real quick. KD, which is, is something that's coming up very soon. Saturday, there's a ton of stuff going on in Haley. And we're all going to be parking a long ways away. It's going to be a long walk to get to the market. But 
come see us. Bye. We'll be there. Go ahead, Emily. I, I kind of want to just add and kind of reiterate what Katie was saying. Um, we just live in just a wonderful community that is so supportive of local food, of all the local farmers that are around and just so grateful that we are able to be here and because it really allows us to really live this wonderful lifestyle that we've always dreamed of. And I don't think we would be able to do it as well anywhere else. I feel like this whole area is just so motivated to making local food really um, sustainable and and we're really appreciative of all of the wonderful community members that we have and all of the wonderful customers and um, just the support. It's so wonderful. Just wanted to, I mean, Katie said that too, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's always nice to reiterate how amazing our community is because I completely agree. It's, it's part of the reason I moved here when I moved here seven and a half years ago. It's like there is a robust food community. And since I came here, it's only grown and it just keeps getting better and better. Um, and it's wonderful to see. So thank you all for your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to put up another slide really quick, just so people can see your contact info again. Um, like John mentioned, we have a Saturday farmer's market in Haley today. Uh, Local Food Alliance will actually have a booth set up and we'll be handing out our locally grown guides. And all of these amazing vendors that were in the webinar today will be there. So stop by, shop, say hello. Um, let them know that you are part of this food community. And uh, I'll do my other survey, shameless plug. Let us know how we did. We're really interested in knowing um, if you learned something new, if you met a new vendor and your feedback overall. And um, we would really like to continue hosting these farmers um, meet your farmer webinar series. So we're actually going to be sending out another survey in a couple of weeks asking for your feedback of like other topics you'd like us to cover, other farmers you want to meet what you really liked about this so we can think about doing another one and hopefully all of our farmers that are on today will join us maybe not in the middle of the season and we'll do more of a fall winter series so it's not coming into the busy time of year for you all but um I think that's it from me and we'll stay I'll stay on until everyone signs off if other people want to chit chat or ask other questions or for the farmers to talk amongst themselves, but you're also busy. So feel free to jump off if you're ready to go.